Captain Monty Takes the Plunge. Written by Jennifer Muxang. Illustrated by Liz Starin. Published by Kids Cam Press. Monty the Malodorous was a fearsome pirate who sailed the six or seven seas. He was brave. He was bold. He was brilliant with his sword. When he raised the Jolly Roger, other ships turned and fled. And when he cruised into port, other pirates handed over their treasure. But Monty had a secret. He could not swim. While the other pirates jumped into the ocean for their Saturday scrub, Monty stood on a cannon and bellowed, Real pirates don't bathe! Yar har har! This attitude earned him much respect and a great deal of personal space. Then one day, Monty spied Meg. She lounged in the shallows, her long hair streaming. When she lifted her ocarina to her lips and began to play, Monty's heart went kathunk. He tumbled head over boot heels in love. Monty gave Meg a star-shaped pearl he'd found and lent her his favorite book, Gulliver's Travels. He made her laugh with his jokes and riddles. Why did the fish cross the ocean? repeated Meg. To get to the other tide! Yar har har! And what do sea monsters eat for dinner? Fish and ships, chortled Monty. Yar har 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 har! In turn, Meg showed Monty how to scrape barnacles from his ship's hull and led him to the best fishing spots. She taught him to set his course by the constellations. Monty was impressed, but more than anything, he admired that Meg swam like a fish. He asked her over for dinner. No thanks, she said. You're a real nice pirate, Monty, but you smell like stinky boots. Monty was the saddest pirate on the six or seven seas. He tired of treasure hunts and refused to go on raids. Instead, he huddled in the crow's nest and moped. Not even the strains of his first mate's harmonica or the crew's rough songs of pillage could cheer him up. One afternoon, as he gazed wistfully over the ship's rail, Monty saw Meg perched on a rock, combing her tresses. Ahoy! he shouted. But as she turned to smile at him, a huge tentacle snaked out of the water and closed around her. Meg's eep of surprise was cut short as she vanished under the waves. Then all was still, except for the thump, thump, thump of Monty's heart. All hands on deck, he yelled, but there was no reply. The entire crew had gone cutlass shopping ashore. Monty gathered up every bit of his courage. He climbed up on the cannon and stared, trembling, into the shadowy water. He took a deep breath, held his nose, closed his eyes, and jumped. Monty swam like a stone, plummeting through the cold water. He opened his eyes and kicked out his feet, right on top of the octopus's head. The creature looked up and coiled a tentacle around Monty's waist. Monty reached for his sword. Another tentacle slithered over his shoulder and swiped the blade away. Monty's heart sank to the bottom of his stinky waterlogged boots. What kind of pirate couldn't defeat an octopus? The creature tossed its head back in glee. Aha, thought Monty. He gritted his teeth and curled his fingers. Then he reached out and planted his fingers right in the octopus's middle. He gave it a mighty tickle. The octopus doubled over, helplessly waving its tentacles. Meg joined in, and they didn't stop tickling until the octopus let go and whooshed itself away in a cloud of ink. Meg did a happy backflip, then swam after Monty, who was flailing his way to the ocean floor. She threw her arms around him and gave him a humongous squeeze. Monty lost the last of his breath in a fizz of bubbles and fainted. He awoke on the shore with Meg by his side. My brave Monty, 
she said. Now that you smell like fresh air and seaweed, would you like to have dinner with me? Monty gazed into Meg's sea green eyes. For the second time that day, he gathered up every bit of his courage and said, I, Meg, but only if you promise, he blushed and whispered, to teach me how to swim. Is that all? said Meg. I'll have you doing the backstroke by Saturday. Monty was the happiest pirate on the six or seven seas. Soon he could tread water, do the dead man's float, and salty sea dog paddle like nobody's business. And every Saturday, before dinner with Meg, he leaped off the ship's rail into the ocean, shouting, Yar-har-har! Har. Real pirates don't just bathe, they cannonball. <laughs>